Hey, how you doing everyone? John Egan here from Dreamfire Films. Today we're gonna make some tracer rounds, just like in this shot here, which is actually from my latest action film, Nerf Rebellion, that you can find on my channel. Today we're gonna go over making a 3D camera, setting up a multi-view workspace, making a tracer round from scratch, animating it, having it go behind your actor, and we're gonna make a few different tracers for variety. I'm using After Effects Creative Cloud version 12.2.1.5 on a Mac. So in this shot that I have here, I want tracers coming towards the camera from these bad guys in the background. I don't know if you can notice it, but I didn't have enough actors for bad guys, so I just kind of added these shapes and put muzzle flashes in front of the shapes. It turned out to be pretty cost effective. So to do this, we're going to be working in 3D space. I like to split my view into four parts when working in 3D space. To do that, make a camera. You can go up top to Layer, New, Camera, but I like to come down here to the Timeline, right-click in an open space, or right-click over here in this little gap right before the footage and after the buttons. Then go to New, Camera. The 35mm preset will be just fine. Next, you're going to want to go to this little button down here at the bottom of the composition window that says one view. Drop that one down and go to four views. Now, yours may or may not look like this, but we're going to set it up correctly right now. Go to the top left window right here. You can left click it or middle mouse button click it as to not disturb any of the footage. The middle mouse button is probably your scroll wheel. Make sure you click it and you get these little yellow triangles in the corners. That's how you know that that view is active. Come down here to the bottom where it says active camera. It could also say any of these things on your screen. But we want to make sure that this one says camera one. That's the camera that we just added a few minutes ago. Go over here to the top right view. Click it once. Go back down to the same area. Mine says active camera. Make sure this one also says camera one. Down here for the bottom left window. Make sure this one says top. And over here for the bottom right, make sure this one says right. You also might notice that it says what the view is in the top left of the window. Now that this is all set up, come down to the timeline and select the camera. The camera is actually this little pink rectangle down here and over here. The triangle is its field of view. Now this black box might be a little confusing because it's the same shape as your footage, but actually the whole gray area is the 3D world that you can work in. So as you can see, this bottom right view here is kind of like standing to the right of your camera, as if you were back on set. And in the top view, it's kind of like hovering above your camera. I like to keep this top right window full screen at all times so I know what my footage looks like. All right, let's go ahead and make a tracer. Now you can go up here to Layer, New, Solid. But I like to use my method down here on the timeline where I right click, go to New, Solid. All right, let's go to the color box. Make sure you are on the yellow part of the color spectrum over here. And bring it around to like a pale yellow. I'm sorry, medium yellow solid four. Excuse me. Let's rename this guy to Tracer1. Select him, hit enter. All right, let's resize it by grabbing this little red thing in the corner and making it a long rectangle. Cool. Now we want to add some Gaussian blur. You can select the tracer, go up to Effect, and Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur. But I like to select it, go over here to the Effects Controls panel, right-click, and then go to Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur. Let's set this guy to 600. Let's add another blur. I'm going to right click, go to blur and sharpen, directional blur, set its direction to 90, and set its blur length to 600. Next, we want to make our tracer a 3D object. If you don't have this 3D layer icon in your timeline header, you might have to hit the toggle switches slash modes button to get to it. Hit the box, it'll give you a cube. Bam! Magic. 3D. 
Let's save. Find where you want your tracer to start in your footage. So scrub around. I kind of want it to come out of this floating muzzle flash that no one is shooting. Now that I've found the frame I want, select the tracer again, and let's trim off all this excess in the beginning. Hit Alt, open bracket, and it's done. Now let's angle this tracer roughly in the direction that it will be moving. To rotate it, you can go to your tools panel all the way in the top left and get the rotation tool that kind of looks like an arrow spinning counterclockwise, or you can hit W. I want mine to be coming from the car, the top of the car, towards my actors. So let me zoom in on my tracer a little bit in these windows. I'm going to grab the green arrow, which is the local Y axis. It's local to the tracer. If you turn it, you can see it's turning in 3D space, and you can see how all of these other views perceive it. So if this is the top-down view, I want it to be going in a roughly diagonal direction. Let's get the selection tool again, which is up here in the corner, or you can hit V. Zoom in on the top-down view, where you can see the tracer's x-axis. It's the red arrow. Drag that guy really far. You have to zoom out. Try to grab that x-axis. Have it go a little bit further. Come back up here to the final shot where you can see the y-axis again. Drag that up. Use these arrows to roughly get it into position. Hit W again for your rotation tool. I use this frame to zoom in on it to really see what it's doing out there. If you rotate it on its z-axis, you can see we can Get it to point in the direction that we want. That's looking pretty good. Come down here to the timeline, make sure the tracer is selected. Hit P on your keyboard. That'll give you the position settings. Hit the stopwatch to give yourself a keyframe at that point. Now move forward two frames by hitting the page down button twice. That's right above the arrow keys on your keyboard. Hit V to get your selection tool back. Go to the top view here. Go roughly to where that x-axis is, that red arrow, and drag until it just reaches the edge of your frame, like this. Alright, just like before, let's get rid of the excess footage that this tracer has after this keyframe. So, you have the tracer selected down here, hit Alt, close bracket, and it will get rid of everything after this frame. It leaves that frame though. Now if I deselect the tracer and hit page up and page down, you can see what we have. Let's preview it with a RAM preview. In the timeline, move your scrubber a decent amount to the left of the tracer. Hit B. Move ahead a good amount. Hit N. Now to do a RAM preview, you can go up here to your preview window, which by default will usually be all the way in the top right corner. And you can hit the little RAM preview button all the way to the right. Or you can hit 0 on your number pad. If you don't have this preview window, you can find it under the window dropdown. So that's okay, but sometimes we want to make it look like the tracer went behind the actor. To do that, select your actor footage in the timeline, duplicate it with Command D or Control D if you're on a PC, take the pen tool up top, or get it by hitting G, and just draw a rough mask around your actor. Doesn't have to be amazing. Get your selection tool, and bring the tracer down to be in between these two footage clips. You can get really advanced with this by going to that top layer of footage, hitting the M key, which gives you your mask. You can animate its path if the tracer ends up behind that person for more than one frame. Say we needed to move it again, you could do that. Luckily I don't need to do that this time. And if you double click this little drop down arrow, can always feather things and make them look awesome. Usually tracers fly so fast though this isn't necessary. Because it just uh, happens for one frame, we can go ahead and use our Alt open bracket and Alt close bracket to bring this footage down to just one frame. Alright, let's see how that looks. Nice. Let's add another tracer, this time bringing it closer to the camera. Select your tracer in the timeline, duplicate it, 
Command or Control D. Move it a little later in the timeline. This is the fun part. Now that the tracer has already been created and animated, we can pretty easily make as many as we want, going in whatever direction we want. Check this out. With our new tracer selected, if we come over here in our top view, we can see the beginning keyframe and the ending keyframe. If you want the tracer to start over by this black car and end really close to the camera, in the timeline, put the scrubber in the middle of the footage. Then in the top view, back up in the composition window, come over here, grab this keyframe, move it on over. While keeping an eye on your top right view, with these four views, you really get complete control over what's happening in your scene. Maybe I want it to be a little bit higher as it gets closer to the camera and a little bit lower near the car. But I want it to be really close to the camera up here on its, on its going out frame. I want it to really show up. So if you come over here to the top view, here's your camera and here's your tracer. Let's just bring our friend closer to the camera. And now you've got your trajectory down. The only thing is it's traveling sideways. Because it's not a heat-seeking tracer, it can only travel in a straight line. So back to the rotation tool, hit the W key, find it in your windows, zoom in, and line it up with its trajectory. Hold Alt to make smaller incremental adjustments. Nice. Let's get this one. And remember, you can always manipulate it in one window and see what you're actually doing in another. Cool. And it looks like it's supposed to be doing that. Sometimes it looks better to have your tracer in the shot for four frames instead of three. You can do that by going to the timeline and dragging the left end of your tracer footage over one frame and moving your keyframe back to the new starting point of the footage. Now you've essentially slowed it down by one frame. Now my footage is a little extra shaky and that can make a tracer look strange if it's on screen for too many frames. So I'm gonna leave mine at three frames. Now let's make one going across the screen as if it's being shot from the top left to the bottom right. If your actors are in the middle of an all-out gunfight, you'll probably end up making a lot of these. They're easy to make and they can add a good amount of intensity to the scene. Let's duplicate our latest tracer, move it to some other point in the timeline, hit P, make sure your scrubber is in the middle of this new clip so you can see your keyframes up here, find it in your views, and make the trajectory parallel to the camera lens. I want this tracer to go from the top left to the bottom right. So use your top left window to give it that diagonal angle. Let's hit W to get our rotation tool again. And let's line him up. Hit V for the selection tool. Right now it's only on screen for one frame, but I want it on screen for two frames. Zoom out from these guys. Select one keyframe like this and shift select the other one. You can also box select the keyframes in your timeline. With both of these selected, we can move it around without messing up its animation. I think I want to push it further back away from the camera. And now it's on screen for two frames. The thing is now that it's going from the bottom right to the top left. To fix this, just switch the position of the two keyframes in your timeline. Now we've reversed its animation. I'll slow this tracer down like we did before to give it a different feel. Now, get as creative as you want. 
try a bunch of different angles. You can even get as close to the camera as you want. You can get real extreme with it. I'm going to pause the recording, make a bunch more, and come back when I'm done. So I'm back, and I've made 11 more. Maybe a bit excessive, but I don't care. Now we can export. Your work area will determine what will be exported. You can go over here to Composition and Add to Render Queue. Or if you're on a Mac, you can hit Control Command M. Click on the word lossless. A QuickTime format is good. Under Video Output, go to Format Options. Animation is for if you're going to need transparency or alpha. H.264 is good for compressing really large files and keeping some alright quality. But Photo JPEG should be good for this. You can rename it by clicking on the yellow text next to Output 2. And go ahead and render. And there you go. Hey, are you a visual effects artist in need of royalty-free effects for your shootout scenes? Well, after a year of working on it, I now have just the pack for you, and it's for sale on my website. It's called the Gun Warfare Action Pack, and I made it specifically for shootout scenes. It's got stuff like muzzle flashes, barrel smoke, blood hits, bullet shells, and gun sound effects. There's over 150 effects from seven categories. I'll put a link at the end where you can get some more information. Hey, if you could, give me a like, a subscribe, and a comment, and I'll keep bringing you videos. Alright guys, catch you later.